Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Thank you. Okay, great. So, okay, so before going to exercise, do you have any question for material or anything else? Okay, if there is no question, please let me know if you have any question on homework or, you know, anything else in the lecture note or exam or anything. So let's deal with some exercises which we I, I didn't deal with in the lecture. So first one in the uh, chapter three should be the one, for in 15, I think. Uh, no. Yeah, one for in 15. Oh, uh, there is some question from Harry that, that I was confused by the program like number six on homework. So let me check what the number six is. Okay. And the web sign. I'm just rowing to RevoSign right now. Okay, num part A, but not part C, B, and C. Okay, let's see what the part B and C is. So, okay. In number six, yes. It, I share the screen. Yes. So what you can see is that to prepare me quickly, it was carrying down the tasks, then it shows the, you know, some kind of diagram for the requirement. And number A is about the, you know, mic is one processor. And the number B is about mic and Mary doing the, the same processor and number C is about the, uh, there are three processors, Mary and Jack and Mike. So to, yeah, to deal with this, I just quickly copy this one into my notebooks so that I can show you how can we deal with such a thing. So in the number A, and I think that in the number A is nothing but just summing all the numbers in the diagram, right? Because there is only one processor who is Mike. So he need to do everything by his, himself. So definitely it takes the, at least the amount of time for completing each task, right? So if you add everything, then you can get the answer. And for the number B, I just writing down the last line. So give me a second. 
and T9. Okay, so okay, let, let me share my screen. So okay, can you see this diagram? Okay, great. So in the second case is about if Mike can Mike can talk Mary into helping him to the mirror, and they have some priority list, T5, T9, T1, T3, T2, T6, T8, T4, and T7. So this priority list will be very if you have you know if it is randomly distributed. So sometimes maybe some of you have some different one, but if you have such a priority list, then you can sync Mike and Mary at process one and two. So first of all, Mike as processor one and Mary as processor two. And then, yeah, as I did in the last time, first of all, you need to figure out that which or oh, how can I make this one oh, resize? Okay, great. I just make this one a little small. Can I also get this one out? Yeah. So first thing you need to figure out is which one is, which tasks are already at this point, right? So this point is time zero, and there are two available processor, Mike and Mary, and there are three available job, T1, T4, and T7, right? But using uh, from the priority list, T1 is the most prioritized one, and T4 is the next one, and T7 is the last one, right? So we need to deal with T1 first. So I just uh, let Mike deal with T1. So T1 starts at first, and let Mary deal with T4. Oh no, oh yeah, T4, because T4 is the second prioritized one. Does it make sense? So T4. Then we know that T1 takes seven minutes, right? So T1, 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 T1 right? And T4 takes two minutes, right? So after two minutes, now Mary is free, right? So Mary needs to do another task. And at this point, what, it, what we completed is T4 only, right? So you can just delete T4 from your diagram. Then one can do, then T1 is done by my, um, Mike, so you cannot do T1 at this point. And T5 requires you to complete T7, so you cannot do T5 at this point. And uh, definitely T2 cannot be done at this point. Also, T8 cannot be done at this point because T7 is not completed, right? So the only available job or only tasks which are ready is T7, right? right? So you can just assign T7 into Mary. And here, and T7 takes one minute. Then after one minute, so total three minutes are gone. Still Mary is available at this point, but now Mary also completed his seven, right? And then now you can do T5 because you already did T4 and T7, or you can do T8 because you already did T7, right? So there are two available jobs, T5 and T4. A. And from the priority list, T5 is the most prioritized one, 
and T8 is the, you know, from the uh, third from the bottom, right? So definitely Mary should do T5 because T5 is more priorities than T8, right? So you need to assign T5 to Mary and it takes 13 minutes. So T5, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, now I need to resize this one, okay. So, okay. D five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Does it make sense? Is there any question before going further? So I can, so when you mm -hmm. have a priority list, you can do them in an order other than that, but if there's an option, you go by the priority list. So if you don't have such a priority list, then you can make it using the critical path uh, scheduling, right? Yeah. But if you have priority list, then just figure out which tasks are ready at this some point, at the given point, then using the priority list to prioritize those ready to task, okay. then assign them into the each one, right? That makes sense, thank you. Great, mm -hmm. no problem. So again, so in this kind of list, you can also assign that after seven minutes, then now mic is available, then T1 was done and T5 was done by Mary. So you can have to T5. So you, there are two options, T2 and T8. So from the priority list, you can see that T2 is much, much more prioritized than T8. So you can pick T2 and so on, right? So T2 takes six minutes. So after six minutes, at, so at, after 13 minutes gone, then still mic is available and T2 was done. So you can do T3 or T8, but from the priority list, T3 is you know much more prioritized than T8. So let mic delete T3. So T3 takes seven minutes. Four, five, six, seven and at the 16 minutes now Mary is free so you can just and also T3 was done by uh, will be completed by Mike so you cannot take T3 and T5 was done so you can do T6 T8 so and from the priority list T6 is much more prioritized than T8 so you can just assign T6 and so on right T6 take six minutes. So after 20 minutes, now my quiz available and the wrapped job is, yeah, T3 was done. So, and T6 was done by Mary. So she can, he can T8 or T9. But in this case, T9 is more prioritized than T8, right? However, T9 cannot be ready until T8 was completed, right? So the only available job is T8. So just assign T8 into my, then it takes five minutes. And after, you know, completing T6, you can just let Mary take the T9, then your, your job is done. So adding all the times, you can get the answer for B. And C is the same, but now we have three processors, right? So you can do the same thing for Mike, Mary, and Jack, and assign each of the tasks into the each processors. Do you want me to go over it or? 
Do you understand how can they? So, okay, great. Thank you, Harry. Okay, is there any other question? Okay, then let's deal with some exercises. I didn't deal with in the uh, lecture note, so, okay. So, okay, so first one is exercise example 1.15. So here, apply the risk processing algorithm to the same diagram using the same priority risk where priority risk is given here. So, but the there are three processors. So here again, at the time zero, there are three processors available. So P1, P1, P2, P3 are available, but from this right graph, only of only ready job is T1, right? So, okay, you, so you can put T1 into your first processor, then just make two other processors are either because there are no other jobs you can do until you complete the T1, right? And after one minute, T1 was completed. Again, three processors, P1, P2, P3 are ready. So you can do T5 or you can do T2, right? Uh, yeah, so yes, you can do T5 or T2. So I don't mind, my, my job is completely wrong. <laughs> oh my gosh. Then, yeah, so. So you can do it at this point, you can do T5. Or T2, but from the priority risk, T5 was the third rank, but T2 was the, sec uh, the second from the bottom, right? So T5 was more prioritized than T1. So you need to assign T5 into P1 and P2 into processor two, right? So here, T5 into T processor one and T2 into processor, ah, oh, no, I was right. Because yeah, T2 has the two arrows, so, to complete T2, we need to uh, complete T1 and T5. So at this point, only T5 was done. Okay. You know, I also had a mistake. So yeah, in this case, only T5 was available. So just assign T5 into T1 and let other ones either. Then T5 takes four minutes. So after four minutes, the other, other ones are either, and four plus one is five, so we need to write down five at this point. And then, since we just completed T1 and T5, so at the time five, we can do T2 or T6 or T7, right? So T6, T7, T2, but from the prioritized risk, T6 six was the most prioritized one, and T6 is the second one, and T2 is the last one, right? So just assign T6 into the processor one, and assign T7 to processor two, and assign T2 to processor three, right? So here, T6 is the processor one, T and T7 was a processor two, and T2 for the processor three. Okay. 
t6 takes four minutes and t7 takes two minutes and t2 takes five minutes right so after two minutes so at the time seven processor two is available right so processor two can do another job so here two three and process two is available but at this point you know even if t7 was done t8 requires to uh the this completion of t6 for to be ready right so there are no available job at this point right so there are no oh, there are no available job at this point so you can just make it either for two minutes and at the time nine now you completed t6 so t8 is now ready right still t2 is working on so t8 is already ready and available processor is p1 and p2 so you can just add to uh, p8 in a t8 in the processor one and make this processor two as either right so here t8 takes one minute okay so after 10 minutes now again all other processors are available okay does it make sense what do you have any question before going further Okay, then let's deal with uh, the next one. So at the point 10, the only available job is T3 because we already uh, T2 and we just completed T2 and T8. But you know, T2 make T10 ready, you need to uh, complete these two jobs, T5 and T4, uh, T9 and T4, which are not completed yet. So only available job is T3. So just assign T3 into processor one. Then, oh, sorry. I need to change it to color. And then make the other ones either, but T3 takes only two minutes. So I have to, so make, the other ones are either. Then after two minutes, now T3 was also done. And the next available job, or well, next ready to job is T4 and T9. So at this point, again, all three processors are ready and T4 and T9 are ready. So you can just make T4 and T9 into the uh, processor one and two because T4 has the second most prioritized one from the priority list. T4 is here and T9 is here, right? So that's why I assign T4 into processor one and assign T4 or T9 into processor two, right? Okay. T9. Then T4 takes one minute and T9 takes three minutes. So after one minute, after one minute, so in, at the 13, T4 was done, but T9 was completed by processor two. So the only remaining job is T10, but T10 is not ready until T9 was completed, right? So at the time 13, there are no available jobs here, right? So even input processor P1 and P3 are available, but there are no available jobs here, so make them either until 
T9 was done. And after T9 was done, we spent 15 minutes. Then now the only remaining job from the graph is T10. And we have three available processors. So just assign T10 into the uh, first one. And it takes only one minute. So after one minute, so at the 60 minute, all the jobs are completed. So that's why this scheduling gives us the 60 minutes. Okay. Do you have any question on this scheduling process? Or any comment? Okay, great. So the next one is also an exercise. So it is, the, it is similar, but we have a different variety, right? So in this case, again, yeah. here at the time zero, three processors are available, but there are only one ready to job, which is T1. So again, you need to just assign T1 into the processor one. T1 into processor one. And after one minute, so then there are two, uh, or, uh, again, three processors are available and only ready to job is T5. So you can do just T5 and assign T5 into processor one. So this is the same. But at the point, uh, at the time five, then and now available jobs are T2, T6, and T7, and available processors are P1, P2, P3. And from new priority list, T2 is much more prioritized than T6, and T6 is prioritized than T7. So you can just assign T2 into P1, and assign T6 to P2, and assign T7 on P3, right? So that's why I take T2, T6, T7 in here. And again, T7 takes two minutes, T6 takes four minutes, and T2 takes five minutes. So at the time seven, we are two minutes or so gone. And then you have a better processor P3 and only a better job at this point is no, right? Because T4, T5, T1 was done and T2 was uh, done completing by P1 and T6 also is done by T2. So, and T7 was done, but to do T8, we need to complete T6 first, right? But T6 was not completed at this point, at the point time T, time seven. So there are no available jobs. So now you can go. And after two minutes, T6 was done, right? So and it, at this point, P2 and P3 are available. So this and T6 was done. So you have one job, which are ready at this point is T8, right? So just assign T8 into P2, right? So, and so you can get just assign T8 at this point and T8 takes one minute. So after one minute, so at the time 10, then T2 was done, T6 was done, T7 was done, T8 was done, right? So only remaining ready task is T3, right? So after 10 and all available processors are P1, P2, P3. And available job is T3. So assign T3 into P1, right? So here T1 is assigned. And after two minutes, 
Now available processor is P1, P2, P3. And after doing T3, you can, you have uh, T4 and T9 are ready, right? So, and from the priority list, T4 is higher, has higher prioritize than T9. So assign T4 into uh, processor one and T9 into processor two, right? So here T4 is into processor one and T9 into processor two. And after one minute, so at this time 13, so still P1 and P3 are available, but there are no jobs which are ready, right? Because T9 is already uh, assigned to P2 and T10 requires to, uh, to uh, T9 was completed to be ready, right? So at this point, there are no jobs available. So we need to wait until T9 was done. So and T9 was done at time 15. And at this point, all processors are available and there are only remaining job is T10. So by assigning T10 into P1, then you are done, right? So still, even if you have 16 processors and uh, seven processors, you need to have, uh, you need to spend 16 minutes to complete all the jobs, right? So, and this is the region that the 16 minute is the completion time of the optimal schedule. So you cannot reduce more time below than 16. Okay. Do you have any question on this example? Yes, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So I showed up late. Yes, okay. Sir. What if um, you have a task that yes. prioritized higher? I, I'm not looking at this example in particular, but let's say you have a task that is later, but is prioritized higher. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. do the tasks required to get to that task, even though they're not prioritized? No, so let's deal with this using this example, right? So, okay, let's deal with some other example. So here, say T1 takes one minute, T2 takes two minutes, and T3 and, oh, sorry, T4 here. Oh, sorry, just say one minute and before, and we have such a things. And let's say priority list is T4, T2, T3, T1, right? So I think that maybe you're, uh, what you're saying is the kind of this situation that prioritized risk of T4 was definitely more higher than T3, but do we need to do T1 first to do T4 or not? Is it right or? Yeah, this is, this is a good example. Go ahead. Okay, great. So at this point, so that's why actually I adopt the table in the right. So at this point, so first of all, you're just thinking about time to time. So at the initial stage. So only think about the ready to job. What I mean ready to job is just job you can just do right now without requiring any prior task. So at this point, T2 is not ready, right? Because T2 requires a completion of T1. And also T4 is not ready, right? Because T4 requires completion of T1 and T3. So only ready to job is T1 and T3. Uh, what taskers which are ready is T1 and T3. And now you can apply this priority list from for only these two examples, these two tasks. So from here, we know that 
T3 has much more higher prioritize than T1, right? So if we have, for example, if we have processor one and two, then you need to assign processor one to do T3. So this is for processor one. And for processor two, you need to assign T1 into processor two, right? So here it looks like P1 has T3 and P2 has T1, right? Does it make sense? Yes. So, and then after completing T1, because T1 has you know, much shorter completion time than T3, so after one minute, your processor P2 have no job. So you need to assign another job for processor P2. And at this point, we completed T1. So now you can assign T2, but you cannot assign T3 because T3 was assigned to P processor one already. And also you cannot assign T4 to P2 because T4 is not ready at this point because T4, to make T4 ready, you need to complete T3 first, but T3 is still working on, but, or, or still worked by P processor one. So T4 is not ready at this point. So the tasks which are ready at this point is T2 only. So you can just assign T2 into, uh, in P2 to complete the job. And T2 takes two minutes. So after three minutes spent, now again, or processor P1, P2 are ready. And then T3 was done, T2 was done. So only remaining job is T4. So you can assign T4 into P1 and make P2 either, then everything is done, right? So the, right. okay, do you have a question? Okay. Uh, no, I said that, that, all right, I got it. Okay, yeah, so, yeah. so the first thing you need to do is just figure out which one is ready at specific point, at specific time, right? Then you can use your priority list to prioritize your ready to task, right? Does it make sense? Yep. Great. Okay. Do you have any question? Or comment? So, okay, so 1.18 is almost similar example to the above one. So I will just do another thing first, then do it again. So, okay, so because we just spent 45 minutes in the lecture to uh, explain critical path scheduling. So I just wanna explain this one again because I had some mistake at that point. So yeah, so critical path scheduling is uh, just uh, algorithm for making priority list from the graph, uh, from the diagram. So again, this is kind of procedure that first of all, you need to figure out the critical path first. So from here, five first, one path is, one longest path is this, and second one this, third one, fourth one, and fifth one. And I think that the first pass, five plus three plus four, is eight plus four, which is takes 12 minutes, but seven plus two plus four is nine plus four, which is 13 minutes. So this one is the critical pass at this point, right? So in this case, just as the first job of a poor first task of the critical pass in your priority read first, right? So T3 is the most prioritized one among all other tasks, right? And then delete T3, right? So now we delete T3 at this point. And again, just find another critical path except T3, right? So here 
first uh, line takes still takes 12 minutes, but second line now takes six minutes, and third line takes six minutes, and fourth line takes seven minutes, and the last line takes five minutes, right? So the first line takes 12 minutes, so this is the critical path. And again, just put the first task in your critical path into the priority list. So T1 is the next prioritized item, then delete T1. And you can just repeat this kind of procedure again. So again, now the first pass takes only seven minutes, second pass takes six minutes, third pass takes six minutes, fourth uh, pass task, uh, takes six, seven minutes, and the last pass takes five minutes. So the this seven minute pass is the critical pass at this point, excepting the point T3 and T1. So you need to put T2 into your priority list, then delete it. Then there are only remaining passages are this one. And again, we have the seven minute one again, so you can put T6 into here, right? So at this point, you guys have some, you know, Kind of confusion that because when we add T2, this one has seven minutes, but this T6, T8 has also seven minutes, right? So not only this one's critical pass, but also this one is critical pass, right? But I just choose T2, right? At this point. The reason I choose T2 at this point is that if you have two critical passes, then just add task with the lowest number. Uh, so I just crossed out T3 and T1 because it was, uh, uh, it was already put into the priority list. So what I did, okay, I just do want to explain again, for making clear, is that first critical pass is this one, so I just add T3 into my priority list first and delete it. And next critical pass is this one. So I, again, I just put my first task T1, uh, put first task T1 into priority list and delete it. Then third critical pass is this one or this one, but here, there are two first tasks, right? T2 and T6. So in such a uh, duplicate case, I just add T2 because T2 has lower number than T6. Two is right on less than six. So I just put T2 first into the priority list and delete the first task, right? Then we already delete the T2, T1, T3, right? Then Again, you can figure out that this one is the critical pass. So you can just put T6 into the your priority list and again delete it. Then the remaining is T4, T8, and T5, T8, both the critical passes. So also T4 has rest number than T5. So add T4 first and delete it. Then after this, all the remaining ones are already described. So, and critical pass is this one. So you can add T5 next. And again, then you can just delete T5. And from this graph, you can have only critical pass T6 to T8. So, ah, sorry, T6 is already done. So you already have critical pass T7, T8. So add T7 and the last, the only point T8 form a critical path, so we can just T8. So it is making a process, uh, making a priority list, not the schedule, right? So to make a priority list, you need to just add something, some point into the priority list and delete it as, some, as the first task of the critical path into priority list and delete it and again. Does it make sense, Vinji, or? Great, right? Okay, so then let's do it one more time for this 
critical path one using this example, right? So we have prior twist in, in this one, but let's make critical path scheduling, right? Here. So here, sorry. The, yes, we can review uh, one like one, one half, one, two from the homework. Yes, I can review Binge. Okay. So for this question, you have critical passes. One, two is takes three minutes. One, one takes two minutes. And three, one takes four minutes. So this T4, three, T4 is a critical pass. So just add T3 first into your priority list and delete it. Then there are two passes, this T1, T4 and T1, T2, but, in, but T1, T2 has the critical pass and its first task is T1, so add T1 into the priority list. Then all remaining is T2 and T4, so they are independent. But according to critical path, you know, it is something takes the longest time in the graph, right? So T2 takes much more time than T4. So T2 itself is the priority task, right? Uh, the more prioritized one than T4. So T2 itself is the critical path. So just add T2 and the remaining one is T4, right? So in, at this point, I just wanna mention that yeah, that's why I did with this example. Critical pass scheduling for independent tasks is just equal to decreasing time scheduling. Did you remember what the decreasing time scheduling? So just we put the longest number independent task first and second in longest number in uh, and then task in next and so on, right? So I hope that critical task scheduling for independent task is equal to decreasing time scheduling. Just re please remember this one for your exam. It will be definitely one of the statement where the, you need to uh, figure out true or false. Does it make sense? Okay. okay, so Rinji, what kind of program do you wanna do for homework especially? Could you let me know? Oh, before going to yeah, chapter one or two, I just briefly want to mention about best bit algorithm because I didn't deal with it in the example. So best bit algorithm is the same as worst bit algorithm, but except the choice of the bin which has space. So in the worst bit algorithm, we choose the space with most one, right? But in the best bit algorithm, we choose with the space with least one. So here, okay, so let's deal with this one with me. So, okay. I don't know why this, okay, great. So here, that five should be into the box one because there are no box already. So five should be into the box one. So five is done. And for the seven, seven cannot be into the box one because box one has only 10 rates. So in this case, you need to open box two to put your seven. And now next, two here, yeah, in the worst bit algorithm, two is going, two is put on box one because box one has space five, but box two has space seven, right? So you have 
have remaining space five, but box two has remaining space seven, right? That's uh, three, three, right? But <clears throat> in here, in the best fit algorithm, you need to uh, put items with the least space point, right? So box two has the least space three for, uh, for item three. So you need to put two into here, right? So I just write that two into here. So now it's remaining one, remaining space is one. And next six cannot be uh, put into box one or two. So you need to put this one into box three, right? And then again, five here, remaining at the least space is definitely box two, but box two cannot, uh, cannot have five because it has already four, almost four. And also box three cannot have five because you know, it has already space four or four. So only available box is box one. So you need to put five onto this box. Then this one is the four. So you are done. And next one is item with rate one. So here we know that now we have only one rate here. So by adding one, this one is also done. So it is also four. Then next one has items with rate three. But you know, box three has uh, space four, so it can take three and use the wrist space bin. So you can just add your three into box three. Then the remaining space of the box three is one. And the next one is way four. So you can just put it into box four because four cannot be in, into the box three. And now box four has remaining space six. And the next one has way two. So now here, okay. Year two cannot be into box three because box three has no uh, enough space for two. But box four has enough space for two and the other space is, uh, it is the least space is being right? So you can just add two into your box four and its remaining space is four. And again, now weight three, box three cannot get the weight three item. So box three is not the option, but box four has space four, so you can store weight three item, right? So you can just add three, then box four has already made space one. And next, six cannot be into box three or box four, so we need to put it into the another one, box five, and box five has remaining space four. And the last one, um, the last item has weight three, so it can be stored into box five, and the box five is the least space, uh, Bin, so you can just put items, uh, last item into box four to complete the best bit language. So does it make sense? Or do you have any question on best bit language? Okay, so Rinji, do you have specific problem numbers for the homework so that we can deal with? Oh, Rinji, uh, you you uh, you you said that after this question, can you review one like one half from the homework, but? Does it mean the number one or number two of the homework three or? Ah, okay, okay, got it. Great, 
So, okay, let's do it number one. So I will share my screen on the problem. So, okay, so first problem is about the, yeah, task time or 12 independent tasks, right? So it is given in a minute and that we know that uh, the program requires us to use the least processing algorithm to schedule these tasks on three processors, number one, two, three, and the tasks are prioritized in the order written above. So I quickly copy this one and serve it for you. So T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6, T8, T9, T10, T11, T12. Right, okay. So these are tasks and these are completion time. So now I wanna prioritize uh, I want to use the list process algorithm to schedule this task on three processors. Let's say P1, P2, P3. So since we know that tasks are prioritized in the order written above, so T1 is definitely the most prioritized one. So we need to put T1 into here and T2 into the second prioritized one. So we need to put T2 into the P2 and T3 is the next prioritized one. So we need to put T3 into processor three. And each one has takes time two minutes or seven minutes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And T3 takes four minutes, right? So at the time two, so it is the starting time is just zero. So at the time two, P1 is, P1 is available for doing next job, right? And next job available in the case of independent task is T4, right? So this is the most prioritized one at this point. So just assign T4 into the processor one, and it takes 10 minutes. We want to say four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, sorry. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? So this is the 20 minute. And after two minutes, from the two minutes, so after four minutes total, then P3 is now available. So you can just assign T5 into P3 and it takes 10 minutes. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, nine. And I still, I just write down below here again. Okay. P1, 2, P3, and this is the 12 minute. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so this is your 13 minutes, right? Uh, no, in the in the jam, there are no such a big, yeah, big ones, especially for scheduling programs. So scheduling program usually deal with three or, uh, no, not three, five or six tasks. So you don't need to worry about the uh, board. Yeah. Okay. And again, so after, so here is the number four. And after seven minutes, P2 is available. So you can assign T4 or T5 was assigned. So you can assign T6 into T2. 
and it only takes three minutes. So after 10 minutes, P2 is still available. So you can assign T7 into T P2. And it was done at the time 30, right? So, but you know that after 12 minutes, at the time 12, P1 is now available. So you can assign, okay, okay, T7 is done. You can assign T8 into the P1. So T8 takes six minutes. T8, 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 T8. So, this is fourteen, and after thirteen minutes, P two and P three both are available. So you can just put. We know that we already assigned T A, so you can assign T nine and T ten. So here, T nine and T ten, and T nine takes eleven minutes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. And T ten takes five minutes. Three, four, five. So at the point time eighteen, P one and P two are available, and you already do the job. T nine, T ten. So T nine is working on work work by P process two. So all the remaining job is T11 and T12. So assign T11 and T12 to P3. Then T11 takes a minute. And T12 takes nine minutes. So T11 was done at the 26, A plus A B is 16, and T 12 was done at the 27 and this T9 was done at this point but which is just you know rest than the this one so at this point you need to put either for each one then you can complete the schedule uh, rhymes right so in case of the number one the which task does the process number one complete is T1, T4, and T8, and T11, right? And the which test does the process to complete is T2, T6, and T7, T9, and which per task process three complete is T3, T5, T10, T12, right? Does it make sense for ABC or do you have any question on those scheduling? Great, so number D is, is the schedule optimal? And to figure out the optimality of the independent task, we says that it is just the maximum of one over two value, the one is the longest job. And the other is number of total time over number of processor. And we know that the longest job takes 11 minutes, right? So from here, this one is the longest job. And the total time is, okay, say let's deal with this. Two plus seven plus four plus 10 plus 10 plus three plus three plus six plus 11 plus five plus eight plus nine. So each one is nine plus four is 13. So it is 33. And this one is nine plus three, 12, 12 plus, Five is 17 and 17 plus 11 is 28 and 8 plus 9 is 17. So if you add all the things, then you can get 78. 
So it is 78 over 3. So 2, 6, 26. So whichever the maximum between this 11 or 26 is the optimum. So therefore, it takes 26 minutes if the schedule is optimal, right? But you know that to complete the T trap, yeah, it stops at the stress seven minutes, right? So that's why we don't, uh, it is not uh, optimal, right? The, is that bottom of the equation, the number of processor not which process the longest is in right? Yeah, it is number of processor, yeah, not the longest one. So it is, in, in this case, it is three because we have three processors, yeah. process. So this schedule is not optimal. And how long is an optimal schedule for this 12 task is 26 minutes, right? Because 26 minutes is the, from the calculation. Does it make sense? Or do you have any question on this problem? Then let's do it. Okay, great, thank you. And let's do it number two. Okay, so number two says that the task of the independent, six independent tasks, T1 to T6, are given in minutes as uh, such a thing 11, and now 11 for seven. So you use the decreasing time list algorithm to schedule with this one, uh, this one into processor of one number one, two, and answer the following question. So, okay, so let's do is just the, make the decreasing time scheduling. So here to decreasing time scheduling, to make decreasing time scheduling, you need to figure out the which one is the most biggest one. So the most biggest one is these two, right? If T1 and T4 takes 11. So again, if you have the tie number one, then just put the lower number, the lower number index task first. So in your priority list, T1 should be in the first and T4 should be in the next. And we already, Done it, so just delete T1 and T4. And next longest process is T2, right? So put T2 next. And next longest process is T3, which takes nine. So T3 next. And the next longest one is T6. So just T6 next and put T5 is the last one, so this is our prioritized list. So now using your two processors, just plug in T1 first and T1 takes 11 minutes and T plug in, uh, assign T4 into process two. So after 11 minutes, they were done, right? Then next one, we need to put T2 into the processor one and T3 into processor two, then again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay. one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay, nine here. So here, T2 was done, at nine, 10, T3 was done, and T2 was done, okay. T2 was done, and T3 was done, right? So after nine minutes, so here is after 12 minutes, 20 minutes, so P2 is available. So you can assign the next job, because T2 and T3 was done, so D6, which takes seven minutes, so it 
ends at 27 minutes. And now after 21 minutes, you need to assign T5 rust, which takes four minutes. So it process one ends at 12, 25 minutes, right? Does it make sense? Or do you have any question on this scheduling? Oh, oh sorry, okay, yeah. What I do is just, okay, what I do here is from the number 11, 11, 10, 9, 11, 4, 7. First of all, just pick, uh, just select the longest time task. In here, T1 and T4 has the longest time to complete, right? 11. And then since we have the tie number, tie number task at this point, just since T1 has lower index than T4, because one is less than four, so just put your T1 into your prioritized list first, and next, just include T4 into your priority list next, right? And then select the another longest one, except your one and T4, and at this point, it is T2, right? So add T2 into your priority list. And again, select the longest real one, longest task, which is T3, so it's nine. My writing is bad. So add T3 into priority list, and then select next longest one, T6, and T6 into priority list, and so on. Does it make sense, or do you have any question? So the process is just pick the longest time task, put it into your list, and pick the another longest time task, except you already chosen, then put it into your list, and so on. So just, yeah, repeat that. The next question is, is the schedule optimal? So again, put the longest time task in the one side, which is 11 in this case. And the other one is number of total time divided by number of processor. So in this case, total time divided by processor is, no. Total time is 11 plus 10 plus 9 plus 11 plus 4 plus 7. So this first three gives you 30, and next three gives you 22. So it is 52, and number processor is 2. So 52 over 2 is 26 minutes. And, and we know that it takes 27 minutes, so it is not optimal, right? Right? Or maybe I did something wrong. This three takes nine minutes. Yeah, it is not optimal, right? Uh, okay, yeah. No, nothing wrong, yeah. Okay. okay do you have any other question?
is there a type of um, review on WebAssign that has chapter two and three type problems? Uh, you can question me right now or, yeah, but basically, yeah, did you see the review material in the eCampus? Yeah, I, I was just wondering if there was more problems to practice on um, on, ah, okay. on WebAssign, like, it was, it's like a homework assignment, but it's a free review and it has materials from all the chapters. Mm -hmm. I, it was just more practice, that's all. Yes. So I think that in the rebel sign, yeah, those homeworks are only, only homework. But if you want to serve more problem, then maybe, yeah. I think that, yeah, just see the, uh, you know, you know, uh, exercise is in the textbook, it will be helpful because some of the program are based on the exercises. But I don't know, uh, I'm not sure where Verisign has more problem than just given one. That's all right, I'll, I'll check the textbook. Uh -huh. Okay, great. And could you, could we do some of review here together? Uh, what kind of review do you want, Rinji? Ah, okay, yes. That's what I, what I want to do right now. Okay, great. Then give me a second. I think that, okay, so let's delete this one. Great. Can you see the Review material right now. Okay. So let's serve it together. So, okay. So, first program is about the Peter Franks. So, the reason I give you such a program is that definitely in your exam, there are some problems required to. Uh, answer some property of your graph. So the basic property of the graph is definitely number of vertices in the graph. And as you can see, A, B, C, D, E, F, G is just one, two, three, six, four, five, six, eight, five, six, seven. So it has seven vertices. And number of edges are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it is nine edges. So if you can count something well, then you can definitely have no difficulty on this problem. And the, is this graph simple? Yes, so what is the non-simple graph? Great, thank you, Dawson. So it contains a loop, right? So for example, if we had a loop, then it is not simple, right? Or if it has some, yeah, so in this case, yeah, if you, so in the exam, there are some kind of a problem, like how can you make that graph into the simple one? So for example, if you have such a loop into G, How can you make this graph simple? There are several ways to do that, but some way is just deleting this roof in the G, or you can just delete point G, or any kind of action deleting the roof in the G are okay, right? So by deleting, for example, deleting this point G, and this roof was deleted, and this roof was deleted, so this graph is simple, which is you know, not the same as the original graph, but anyway, it is simple, right? So such a question will be occur in the exercise, uh, in, the, in the exam, so please be prepared about this. 
Okay, do you have any question on the number one? Okay, so the next one. So essay type is just something you need to type into your eCampus program directly. So it doesn't require you to take a picture, but yeah, it requires to type some, you know, kind of argument to answer the question. And first question is, does this graph above has an order circuit or order pass? And please answer it using the order theorem, right? So, okay, so let's, I just made it a little bit smaller so that I can write it more. This size. Okay, so, and just, I wanna record the order theorem. It says that there are three cases, right? Let's say G is a graph. If G has no odd degree with no odd balance, okay, uh, has no vertices with odd balance or degree, then it has your circuit or the circuit, at least one or the circuit. All right, and second condition is that if G has only two vertices, say A and B, with all degree, then it has a at least one order pass from A to B, right? And the third case is that otherwise, so G does not have such, such a vertices, then G has no order pass or or your circuit, right? So in the actual exam, you don't need to write down full sentence or the theorem, right? But just assume that you and me or greater knows the order theorem. So from this point, you can see that at this graph, A has degree two, B has degree three, C has degree three, D has degree two, G has degree two, F has degree four, E has degree two, right? So only B and C has the odd degrees, right? So this graph contains only two points with odd degrees, right? So it is the second case or the theorem. So there is, so first of all, you need to write down that your graph has only two vertices with odd degrees. Therefore, by order theorem, it has an order pass, right? So that's the perfect answer. Yeah. And the next one is find the order circuit if it doesn't exist. If it doesn't ex uh, find the order circuit, and if it doesn't exist, then find the order pass. And if it also doesn't exist, then write none, right? So by the answer, we know that order theorem, we had an order pass. And we, if you remember the last sentence, then it starts from A ending at B, right? So 
In this case, B and C are the odd degree things. So it starts with B or C, right? So just uh, pick B for the starting point. Then maybe you can get A, E, F, and the reason I choose A first because that I just want to avoid C in, the, in my first digit because C should be my ending point, right? Then maybe at this point, go to G, D, C, but you can use this triangle to go back to C, right? So one of the paths is B, A, E, F, G, D, C, F, B. And since it is not a Hamiltonian path or Hamiltonian circuit, so you can repeat your points, right? But you don't need to, but the only thing you, you are not allowed to do is repeat the edges, not the points, right? Not the vertices. So it is one of the oil paths and there are several more oil passes in here, right? So any kind of oil passes can be answered. Okay, do you have any question on these two? Does it make sense? Okay, thank you, Arbit. So let's deal with next question. And number three is about the rectangular graph. And the original graph is black, so this is just rectangular graph. And blue edges are added to oilize the graph. And is the above oilization is the best oilization? Explain. And there are two possible answers, right? So when we deal with edge worker method, did you remember it? Edge worker method is just adding edges. Uh, into the uh, adding edges on the boundary ones, right? Uh, from rectangular graph, we know that the inside one has always db4, which is not odd, right? But polarizing means that just uh, delete the old degree vertices by adding some edges. So you can just add your edges on the boundary, then you can get the polarization. And one good thing for edge worker method is that, as you see there in the lecture notes or a uh, textbook, then we know that old edge worker method gives the best realization for the rectangular graph, right? So by mentioning this part, you can just say that, oh, since it, this is the graph of rectangular graph, but you know, this is the, and it is actually, to polarizing by uh, adding some edges in the boundary. So it definitely it is one of the uh, edging worker method. So you can just say that it is the best polarization. That's one of the first tensor, right? right? Does it make sense? Okay. And next answer is, Maybe you don't memorize the edge worker method gives the best realization for the rectangular graph, right? Or yeah, and honestly, I do not, I hate the kind of programs in the mathematics that some kind of the memorization is needed. So in that case, maybe you can just thinking it by the graph, right? So for example, you can observe that only B, F, D, and H has the odd degree vertices, right? These are all odd degree vertices, and A has degree two, C has degree two, I has degree two, G has a degree two, and E has degree four. So these are not the, you know, odd degree vertices. So all we need to do is just adding some edges to making B, F, D, H into even degree vertices, right? So at least, and we know that if there is a already existing uh, edges between those two degrees, so for example, 
if we have an edge between B and F, then maybe you can just add edge in the, this edge. So making B and F as your uh, even degree vertices by adding only one edge, right? But in this case, it doesn't happen, right? B and F are not connected. And also D and H are not connected. So and any of the old degree vertices are not connected to each other by an edge, right? It is connected each, each other by a path, but not an edge, right? It means that at least you need four edges to overlay your graph, right? Because for each vertex requires at least one edge added to make it balance even. Does it make sense or is it too fast? Then please let me know. It is a little bit difficult for you. So everybody agrees that at least we need four edges to rollerize this graph, or at least make the balances of B, D, H, F to even. Yes, yeah, so make everything even numbered, yes. So what I'm worried about this kind of situation, so let's give some examples. So for example, thinking about this kind of rectangular graph, here, all the degree number of vertices are these red points, right? In this case, by adding only one edge, you can just make two old degree points into the even degree points, right? by just one edge, right? Because these two points are connected by an edge, right? So you can have an edge between them. But this graph is not the same case because B does not connect it with any of the degrees and F is also does not connect it with any of the degrees and the other points are the same, right? So to make an orderization, we need to add at least one edge on B and at least one edge for F and at least one edge for D and at least one edge for H, right? So we need four edges to organize the graph. Does it make sense? And in this case, already given orderization uses only four more edges, right? So it is the optimal one because, yeah, it only requires the necessary edges, which is four edges to use to orderize the graph. So all other orderization should need at least four edges, but this polarization given by edge worker method uses only four edges. So definitely it is the optimal one. So you cannot reduce the number of edges needed for polarizing this graph to all, uh, yeah, to polarize it, right? So that's the second answer. So the, up, uh, the above graph has four or degree vertices and there is no edge between B, A, F, A, D, H. Thus, to override each point, we need at least four edges. But in this example, we already have or uses only four edges, so it is the best one. So this is a kind of same logic that whether the schedule is optimal or not. So when we deal with whether the schedule is optimal, then we say that we just the compare our completion time with the optimal time, right? And if they are the same, then we say that the schedule is optimal, but if they are not the same, 
that we are, we say that it is not optimal. Likewise, we just compare the number of edges needed to overwrite the graph by compare with the, the necessary numbers to overwrite the graph. So in this case, they are the same. So that's why this one is the best overwritation. So the best overwritation is the overwritation, which is the smallest edges possible, smallest added edges possible, right? Do you have any question? What does it make sense? Is it too difficult? Okay, so then I will give you a hint because I think that actually in the exam there are some problems definitely the same as this but with different graph. But I will give you some hint because yeah, it seems too complicated for you. So, okay. So first thing I want to give you is this. Is this the rectangular graph or not? It seems like each block is the rectangular, but it's not rectangular graph. because you know, it is not even complex or, so rectangular graph is just graph with, you can make this one edge into the kind of rectangular, right? But you cannot make it into the, this rectangular type of graph. So it is not the rectangular graph. So in that case, edge your commester cannot give you a best overall sometimes. But for example, in this kind of example, you know, every, there are only all the edges are here. So yeah, in this case, edge record method gives you the best polarization. But thinking about the example like this. Give me a second. In that case, The odd degree vertices are here and here, right? And the all other vertices are actually even. So in that case, if you use the edge your master, then to add those two edges, you need to go, looks like, you know, go to boundary in here or 
if you don't write this, then you can go like adding edges in here, right? But actually, the most failed solarization at this point is just going through the middle path, right? Because middle path only takes five more edges to make this one as the same or uh, even numbers, but the edge of method, you know, in gives you more than five edges because of those tips, right? So in that case, edge of method gives you not the best realization. And I think that this is the hint for the exam because in the exam, there are some kind of the similar graphs here and give you some problem that is the overall erodization is the best or not, explain it. And can you find the best erodization or something like that? Does it make sense or do you have any question? Okay, then let's delete the number four. And from the given graph is A, B, E, H, I, F, D, A, a path. And if you just follow the points, then A, B, B, E, and E, H, and H, I, and I, F, but FD has you know no edges between them, right? So definitely this one is a probability one. So it is not a path because it doesn't contain an edge. And it is not a circuit because yeah, circuit is just special case of pass. And all the circuit and all the passes are the special cases of pass. So yeah, it is not the pass. So the answer is no. Right? Does it make sense? Great. So, okay, then next one. Yeah. So the graph above is called, it is just kind of the, complete, bipartite graph. So the meaning bipartite came from there are two sides of the vertices and complete is came from that actually each side, this point is connected to every other side point and also this point is connected to every other side point, right? And from such a graph, first of all, you need to, you can find the, can you find the order circuit? And no, because you know it has all degree vertices, right? So definitely it doesn't have an order circuit. But is this graph has a Hamiltonian path? And I think that you can find it easily because you know, for example, you can just go looks like this, or you can just testing your graph using your whiteboard, right? So this is the yes. But so when you have some question from the order circuit or, or from about the order pass, then just think all your theorem first and apply it to the, your balances on the graph, right? Okay, that's number five. I think, do you have any question on this? Okay, then number six is actually it is asking the equation d is equal to e. So in any graph, 
the number of some of the balances of your vertices is equal to two times number of edges, right? So just recall this formula and thinking about the graph with three vertices. So say, for you one, for you two, for you three, and each vertex has balance six, six, two respectively, right? So maybe you can draw it directly by yourself. So for example, if I were you, then V1 and V2 has uh, six balance and V3 has two balance. So first one is maybe, yeah, just adding edges between V1 and V3 and V3, V2 to get balance two. So, and so all other edges came from one, two, three, four, five, right? Then balance of V1 is six and balance of V2 is six. Then you can count your edges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But that's not always the case because sometimes you cannot, yeah, you know, you cannot recover your graph from this balance information. So in that case, just remember this equation. Then some of the balances, so in this case, the six plus six plus two, which is 14. So E should be 14 over two, which is seven. So that's why answer is seven, right? And it agrees with the counting edges for specific graph, right? Okay. Do you have any question? Okay, then, yeah, so number seven is making fighter maybe served using the least processing algorithm because we deal with fighter into the chapter uh, three when chapter one, but chapter one is about, you know, making it as a diagram. So to making fighter itself can be served by least processing algorithm because it is just chain of the tasks, right? And first speed algorithm is just putting some, some kind of, you know, uh, items into the bin. So for example, uh, when you run the kind of, you know, uh, uh, radio station, then you need to put some your, uh, your ads from the company to uh, each of the time between the program then maybe you can use pursuit algorithm depending on the time of your ads, but it is not available for making fighter. And also nearest neighbor algorithm can be used to find the Hamiltonian path, not the, you know, making a schedule, right? So in this case, number two is the answer. So in the exam, there will be some kind of problem giving you some kind of the real world situation and how can you serve it using which version, right? So this is the one. And the number, uh, before going further, do you have any question number seven? Will there be a question asking um, mm -hmm. for a list of tasks and we create the diagram for the tasks? There are, yeah, one question, yeah, will be that, yeah, such a thing. So they give you kind of tasks. Ah, no, so give me a second. It is actually, it is not the same as the fighter case. So in case of fighter, these are all sentences. So you may need to make a task into task first and into make it into some kind of graph. But in the programs, in the exam, uh, I will give you some already determined tasks. Then you, what you need to do is just draw the diagram between tasks. Then you need to find the, some kind of critical passage or make a scheduling or something like that. So 
Yeah. There will be such a program. Okay. Great, thank you. Thank you for the question. Okay. Do you have any other question? And number eight is using the per speed algorithm. So pack items given here into box with capacity 10. So this is the per speed algorithm. So you need to first put three into your box, right? Then you can also put eight, but eight cannot be into your first box because eight plus three is exceed 10. So you need to open your second box and put eight. And also seven cannot be into, uh, okay. Why did I know? Okay, give me a second. I need to use the first speed algorithm again before going further. So it's three. So yeah, so in this case, yeah, with capacity 10, yes. Sorry for bad writing. So put items into the first already open bin that has space it. So eight goes to second space. And I think that I had a mistake on this because seven can goes to first one, right? because you know, seven plus ten, three is 10, and this is the first one which you already opened. So this one should be here. And oh, that's my mistake. And it's now poor, so you can close it. And then next one is seven. So we need to seven put in here. seven in here and next one is two. So two should be here because first one is already full and the most of the first bin which has open space is just box two. So you can put two into here and now this box is also full. And next one is eight, so eight is here. And next one is five, five cap into box three or box four, so five should be in here. And the last one is six. Again, six cannot be into seven, eight, or five, so it is in the new box. So this one is the answer. So I don't know why I do it in the last time, but sorry about my mistake. So yeah, this one is the first feed algorithm. Do you have any question? Yeah. In about the next bit and best first bit, but it's much more. So if you're 